Well, another day, another load of garbage in the mainstream media claiming that a study proves antidepressants don't work. I never should have told that disembodied monkey hand that I wanted to make videos about anything besides COVID misinformation. Oh, well. It's been three whole months since I made my previous video about sketchy mainstream media reporting on antidepressants. So I'm just going to crib from that video uh, to start off this video by once again saying that if you are taking antidepressants or other pharmaceuticals to aid your mental health under the guidance of a doctor, absolutely do not stop taking them without talking to that doctor first and following their advice. I am not a doctor and nothing I'm about to say should supersede what your doctor says. Also, if you are feeling depressed or suicidal, please talk to your doctor about it. If you don't have access to a doctor due to being an American, uh, there are community-based health centers that may be able to help you on a sliding scale. Please seek them out. If you are in the U.S., you can get help 24-7 from the National Alliance on Mental Health by texting NAMI to 741741. All right, let's jump right in with the good old Daily Mail. Uh, please note that everything I'm about to read to you is absolutely wrong. Have millions been taking antidepressants with harmful side effects for decades when there's no scientific evidence they do what they claim? Some experts have suspected it for years. Now patients have been left reeling by a groundbreaking study. New research shows the theory justifying antidepressants is just a myth. The research confirms what some medical professionals have suspected. Depression being a chemical imbalance has been proven to be unfounded. Just to repeat, everything I just read to you from the Daily Mail is absolutely incorrect. So incredibly, stupidly, infuriatingly wrong. Like, there's no scientific evidence that antidepressants do what they claim that is wrong. There are hundreds of randomized controlled trials that show antidepressants help people with depression at a higher rate compared to placebo. There is no new research that rebuts that. None. Here's the actual new research that this piss-soaked rag is referring to. The Serotonin Theory of Depression, a Systematic Umbrella Review of the Evidence, published last week in Molecular Psychology. As the title may give away, this is not a new study. This is a systematic review of existing research. As I always warn when it comes to systematic reviews and meta-analyses, they can go in two very different directions. On the one hand, they can be absolutely necessary overviews of the research on a particular subject that look at various studies over a number of years and collate that information into useful data for us. But on the other hand, they can be misleading if the authors cherry pick only the studies that show what they want them to show. So we always have to be skeptical when looking at these types of papers. But before we even get into that, the title should also give away the fact that this was not a review to determine whether or not antidepressants work, which again, they do. This was a review to determine how antidepressants work. Because in all fields of science, researchers accept that sometimes we know that something works, but we're not sure why yet. Like when James Lind performed a randomized controlled trial that found that citrus fruit, fruit cured scurvy in 1753. Vitamin C wasn't actually discovered for another 150 years. The brain is a complicated lump of meat, so it makes sense that how it works exactly remains a big question. In the late 1980s, doctors found that depressed patients could be helped by giving them fluoxetine, more commonly known as Prozac, which is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, or SSRI. SSRIs, to put it very simply, change the way your brain processes serotonin, causing the serotonin to stay for a longer period of time in your synapses. This led some researchers to think, quite understandably, that maybe people are depressed because they need more serotonin. That hypothesis got popular in the years that followed the introduction of Prozac, and it certainly became very popular amongst the general public. But serious researchers have pretty much always known that 
it was going to be more complicated than that. They already knew that depression has many causes. Yes, there's an imbalance of chemicals in the brain, which might include serotonin, but there's also depression that comes from negative life events or from physical ailments. Just because it helps a person when you adjust their serotonin levels doesn't mean that the problem was a lack of serotonin. I've heard several doctors recently explaining this like this. Taking Advil might help your headache go away, but that doesn't mean your headache was caused by a lack of Advil in your brain. So experts haven't seriously thought that depression is simply just a lack of serotonin for quite some time. That said, science isn't just about publishing exciting and novel new theories. The backbone of science is definitively disproving what we suspect is not true. So it might be worthwhile to publish an overview of previous studies on serotonin. You may pick up on the fact that I'm hedging a little here. It may be worthwhile. Well, to truly cross out serotonin imbalance as a cause of depression, we would want for a start to narrow down the data to just those people who are depressed due to a suspected chemical imbalance and exclude those people who have depression for other causes. But this systematic review did not do that. It just took everyone with depression and looked at them all as one big lump. And there are other issues as well. Asia Murphy, an excellent wildlife scientist and photographer who you should follow on Twitter, posted a link to a few experts responding to this systematic review, and they aren't exactly impressed with it. I found a few of their thoughts really interesting. Several of them point out the possibility of cherry picking, but a real eye-opener for me came from Professor David Nutt at Imperial College London, who wrote... This meta-review covers much of the work done over the past 50 years to explore the relationship of the serotonin system to depression. Unfortunately, all of these variables are indirect measures of serotonin function, or even worse, as in the case of the gene linkage studies, merely proxies for serotonin activity. It's only recently that we've developed the technology to measure serotonin release in the living human brain. And in the first study of this type, currently under review, we did find decreased serotonin release capacity in people with depression. So to dismiss the serotonin hypothesis of depression at this point is premature. That's actually really interesting. And I had no idea that researchers had found a way to directly measure serotonin in a living human brain. That is super cool. So to recap, this review is not a new study, it does not comment on the effectiveness of antidepressants, and it doesn't even really seem to provide solid evidence to completely reject the idea that some depressed people may suffer from a serotonin imbalance. As always, you can ignore the Daily Mail, and you can even skip some of the less shitty mainstream media takes about this review. And Please, for the love of God, don't stop taking your psych meds based on anything other than your doctor's recommendation.